Let's look at the next psalm as we ascend closer and closer to Jerusalem. Stand with me. This is Psalm 130. Oh, do I love this one. The watchman. The watchman. I feel such a calling in God to be a watchman. Do you? I pray you do. We're called to be the great watchman on the walls, and I'll explain that shortly. But let's read the whole psalm here as we stand together. Psalm 130 talks about the watchman. A song of ascents. Out of the depths I have cried to thee, O Lord. Hear my voice. Let thine ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. If thou, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? Boy, is that true. I'd be in huge trouble instantly, wouldn't you? But there is forgiveness with thee, that thou mayest be feared. I wait for the Lord. My soul does wait. And in his word do I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. You may be seated again, within God's beautiful and holy word. The first verse says, Out of the depths I have cried to you, O Lord. The depths. I don't know if you've ever figured this out, but I sure have. (laughs) I tend to call upon the Lord out of the depths of trouble problems, issues, more than when everything's going great, right? We seem to find God, or at least look for him, more in the depths than the heights. Death, financial issues, family troubles, right? Sickness, job loss. I mean, all this stuff. I mean, you got troubles with your ears and your eye, right? I mean, we tend to go for the Lord out of the depths, and that's not necessarily wrong, but we need to understand that he means to meet us there. You say, oh, I only find God in the heights and when things are good and well and perfect and nice. Out of the depths. It says in verse 2, oh, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplications. Lord, hear my voice. Do you know the voice of the redeemed is important? I hate, I hate these moment of silences. U.S. Congress is always, let's have a moment of silence, right? What does that say? It says nothing. It says emptiness, right? It says void, a moment of emptiness. Here it says Hear my voice. Scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, right? Yeah, let's do it. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Jesus is Lord. Come on. Jesus is Lord. Oh, I hear all the time people say, well, I just worship God in my own way, quietly in my own heart. I really don't want to say anything. That is not Bible. (laughs) That's not Scripture. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Absolutely. That we speak the name of Christ, we say so. That's taken from Psalm 107, by the way, if you want to know. We're asking here in this psalm for the Lord to be attentive. Attentive to my supplications. That's a big, long word. This simply means, you know, the issues that I'm going through, the stuff I'm hassling with, right? The things that are bothering me. Is that simple enough? Supplications. Do you have any? Oh, I've got, I don't know, 30 or 40,000. But but supplications. The things of your heart. The things that weigh on you. 
We're going to do this right now. We're going to do this right now. We're going to take our supplications, the things that weigh us, and we're going to make them, not out loud, you don't need to scream or yell, I, I get that, but that right now we take our supplications, we're going to pray just for a moment, and we're going to say, Lord, here they are. There's my supplications. You ready? Let's do it. Amen. Amen. Here are supplications. Now, before men, we're verbal. But there are many times before God, we're quiet in our heart and bring our supplications to him. Verse 3 says these one words. If you, Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? None of us is the answer to that. None of us could stand. I'm going to read a scripture. It's from Romans 3, right? You got to go to Romans for this one. Oh, 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 absolutely. Romans 3, and starting with these famous verses, but I want to read them again. Verses 10, 11, and 12. This is, of course, coming from Isaiah that's being quoted by the apostle Paul here. It's coming from David, the Psalms. It's coming from a number of places in the Old Testament, and the apostle is taking all of these different scriptures and putting them line on line. That's what's going on here, okay? So, Romans 3, verse 10, it says, there is none righteous. This is Isaiah, not even one. There is none who understands. That's from Psalm 107. There is none who seeks for God. That's from Isaiah 59. We have turned aside together. We have become useless. That's Psalm 36. There is none who does good, not even one. What an indictment of earth, of all the peoples. The whole point of Calvary is that we're under a death sentence. That's the whole point of Calvary, that we're under a death sentence. And unless we repent and turn to him and accept his death as ours, we stay under that death sentence. You can look at the cross or look at Calvary from a distance and say, oh, that was awful what they did to that good man. But that means nothing unless it is you by identity that are on the cross with Christ, that it's you by identity that walk out of that grave in resurrection life. Verse 4, and we're working our way through this Psalm 130, but there is forgiveness with you, that you may be feared. But you don't often hear those words together, forgiveness and fear. But that's an important concept. That conjunction is important, that with forgiveness comes also the fear of the Lord. Like, oh God, thank you for forgiving me. I was under a death sentence without you. God, don't forget me in the day of judgment. I take your atonement as mine. You don't want to waltz into judgment to go, eh, he's going to take care of this problem. <laughs> don't come in that way. Implies you have a choice. Hmm, hmm. But come in to Judgment Day with the fear of the Lord and come into Judgment Day looking for him to touch you and recognize you. Ah, I remember you. Come here, daughter, son, now. There is forgiveness with thee. You know, it was written in 1000 BC, thereabouts. It was written a long time ago, certainly at least 3,000 years ago. But when it was written, it was understood by the prophets that there was redemption for the world coming. Thank you, Jesus. There was redemption for the world coming, that thou mayst be feared. The world says, ah, it's all good. Your best life now, don't bite. Be careful. Sin must be atoned for with the fear of God and all over it. It's critical. Verse 5. I wait for the Lord. 
My soul does wait, and in his word do I hope. You ever say to your soul, hang on, (laughs) wait, (laughs) soul be still, right? Say it with me, soul be still. You're talking to your own heart, right? Be still, wait for God. Waiting for the Lord is basically lost in this Christian culture. Just don't do it. It's smoke and mirrors, it's entertainment, it's programs, it's now, growth, money, blah, 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 blah. But waiting for God, believers to wait, don't just jump into the wrong action. Verse 5 says, wait, but Isaiah 40, verse 31 says these wonderful words, those that wait for the Lord will gain new strength. You're probably familiar with that scripture. I love this phrase. At the end of verse 5, it says, in his word do I hope. Get hope in the word of God. The inerrant, perfect, complete Word of God is the sanctuary for all believers. I'll say that a second time. The inerrant, perfect Word of God is the sanctuary for all true believers. In his word do I hope. Say it with me. In his word do I hope. Absolutely. We hope within the Word of God. Verse 6, and now we come to the watchman. My soul waits for the Lord more than the watchman for the morning. Indeed, more than the watchman for the morning. Can I talk to you for a minute about the watchman? Here's what the watchman. The, The watchman was a very important man during Bible times because when they'd have the crops... They'd work hard on them, and when they were ripe and ready to be picked, you can imagine where I'm going with this, right? When the crop is ready to be picked, the watchman has to stay up in this tower. These are not huge towers, but they're high above the field where they can see the whole crop and see if anybody's coming in at night to steal it. People would come in and try to get the profit, try to take away from the vineyard, try to take the vines, the grapes, or whatever the sheaves, or whatever the crop was. So the watchman was critical. Now there's a field, and the field is the world. And we as the watchmen need to be guarding that no one is taken from the presence and the will of God. This is why it's so important to me what happens to you. This is why it's so important, why it's important what happens to her and to the believer and everyone around you, that our witness would be strong for all of those around us in our neighborhood, right? All those around us, that we would be as the watchman watching over the field. Now, he didn't just, the watchman wasn't just a watchman for the fields. He was also for the city. The watchman would be posted up on the walls of the city, and he'd walk around the walls at night, looking out as far as he could to see if there was going to be one of two things. Would there be an enemy approaching, unbeknownst to the city at night, or would there be a messenger coming with an important message for the city? So it was both he was looking for. He was looking for the enemy, but also looking for the message. Very important that we are doing both. That we're looking to see if the enemy would come and try to dissolve our witness and our walk with God, but also listening and watching for a message from the Lord. Now, if either one happened and the watchman was up on the wall, he would do immediately what? He would grab the trumpet and sound it. He would no way let the city sleep through the enemy coming in. He would sound the trumpet, or if there was a messenger coming 
with an important message. He would also sound the trumpet because it meant this was important enough for this guy to be running through the night with a message. Oh, do we run through the night? I personally feel this so strongly. I run through the night, and we have a deep night on our culture. We do, and I run through the night with a message to the city of God. This is important for you and for me, that we be as the watchman on the wall, the watchman in the tower, overseeing the field, but also up there on the walls. Ezekiel was called the watchman prophet. The watchman prophet. He would prophesy concerning the people of God. And Ezekiel was in such mourning for the, what the people were going through. It talks about the watchman longs, waits for the morning. Oh, the morning. The morning of God. You know what I'm talking about, the coming of the Lord, right? <laughs> His great morning. We as the people of God wait for that morning anxiously. Oh, come soon. Lord Jesus, we constantly are waiting for the morning. Verse 7 talks about, O Israel, hope in the Lord. For with the Lord there is loving kindness, and with him is abundant redemption. So he doesn't just kind of save you, right? He doesn't give you a little bit of salvation. Whoa! It's the abundant salvation of God, the abundant redemption to hope in the Lord. And when we do, it comes right there with his scripture with two things, his loving kindness and his abundant redemption. Verse 8 says these words, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. What a great promise. Do you want just your major iniquities forgiven? Do you want just your... Little ones forgiven, did you want all of them? All. <laughs> I want all iniquities forgiven in Christ. What a great promise of his totality of sins past, of sins present, and of sins future. In other words, the things you'll blow. <laughs> future forgiveness, past, present, future. So let's conclude. What have we been talking about in this psalm? We've been talking about that we are the watchmen. Try it with me. We are the watchmen. Let's make that even more personal. I am the watchman. I am the watchman. Over the vineyard, the earth, through the night. Oh, we're in a night. Longing for the bright morning, knowing the trumpet of God sounds soon. God bless you.